Alright, hello guys and welcome to another video. I apologize for the lack of videos lately for the past like week or so, but school, busy, just stuff. Also, I've been trying to, I'm going to be posting videos less often because I feel like people aren't interested enough to keep up with a daily video. So I'm just going to be doing like say a couple videos a week, you know, it's, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a set schedule yet, but maybe we'll come out with one like say once on Monday, once on Friday, something like that. But anyway, as you'll notice, I'm not playing a game today. Today, I'm going to be trying something new and I'm going to be doing some Photoshop things. Uh, because I really enjoy Photoshop and I've spent a lot of my time recently, um, you will, let's see, so basically combining animals. So here I have the fantastic random animal generator for listless artists. Uh, basically it generates, you press originate and it generates uh, two animals and it's for artists to draw them. As you can see there, yeah, I actually commented because I've made some pretty interesting things I will show in the video at some point, maybe at the end, maybe right now, but anyway, I made some creations. Um, so this guy drew this for people to draw two animals combined. I use it for Photoshop. So a duck and an oryx. And it, you, there's a Google search button so we can do this. Oh, huh. I've done too many ducks, honestly. I've done like five things with ducks or goose or anything, and it's just an enchidna. Um, huh. Huh. I don't know. I've never seen this animal before. That is kind of adorable. It's like a hedgehog, but like a, it's got a little noisy, a no nose, a little snout nose thingy. You know what? Let's do it. Um, let's see. We have to get the same orientation, so everything's all nice and dandy. Dragging that one onto my desktop. Uh, along with this one, I believe. Yeah. Sweet. Alright, and now we are going to have, this is the base animal, and we will zoom in 300, oh god, the quality, oh god, oh god, oh god, the quality is less than par, but you know what, we shall deal with it, ugh, magnetic lasso, anyway, I mean, I guess I can kind of do a bit more, a kind of a tutorial-ish thing of this, so, what I just clicked on is the magnetic lasso. You can access it uh, by holding down the lasso tool and it comes up with a little window of three options. I'll show you in a minute, but yeah. So I did that and I'm using, it kind of magnetizes to different uh, colors. So like a line, a clear line between like say something. The only problem is with this, you see how the background is, you know, not, oh hang on, can I, ah, crap. Alright, so we're going to first start off by getting this rabbit's head, and we're going to try and situate it on the, I don't even remember, Enchida? I don't even remember the name thing is it for, but it's really, really weird. Alright, so we need to rasterize this layer, and since I drag this in first, it'll be the background, and I'll just convert to smart object, and then rasterize it. That's at least how I do it. Alright, so select, we'll inverse the selection so we can delete everything but the head. And then we will deselect, and then we have a nice little rabbit head that we can control T so to move it around. And we're gonna crop this. Uh, don't mean to drag that. Crop this up so we can have. Yeah, that. Okay. So I think that's a good size. Um, we're actually gonna make this invisible so that we we can just get this little guy in our view because. I don't keep the backgrounds of like the uh, what the first space animal is in, as I like to have everything like you know be the same for backgrounds and just so that the focus is the animal. So I actually have a space background that I just got you know off Google Images. I have a background that was um it's just space and I use that for the background of all of my creations. A lot of my Photoshop creations I actually have started doing that for because it's a nice little just cool background to add for things. So yeah, I feel like this will actually blend really well, these two animals, because like the, the kind of pattern on them isn't like the most different thing, because like if I do like <laughs> just like, I don't know, an hour ago or something, I did an, uh, an emu and a giraffe. It was an emu base body and the giraffe head, neck and area. And because the giraffe has like the spots on it, it looked kind of weird with like the feathers and then suddenly there's a spotted neck. So that kind of happened along with, um, a while ago I did a cheetah and a dolphin and it was really weird, it ended up, you'll see it, I'll probably put it, but it ended up not looking the best, so yeah. And for so that selection as well, it looks like we're all good I guess, I'm gonna edit that really, so yeah. Alright, and that way we just have our nice rabbit, and so we're gonna have to delete, you know, erase a little bit of this guy. 
All right, so now what you want to do for anything for blending, the colors, as you can see right now, the colors aren't exact. I mean, they're close. Like, they're close. It's believable. But So what you want to do is you can hold control and click on the little thumbnail here, not the rest, but like the thumbnail, and it selects the region. And then you can uh, go to Select, Modify, and Contract, and then contract it by, like, a certain amount of pixels. It varies, really. And then go to this layer and delete those pixels. So now you can see that there is a hole of where that would be. That's just because with the um, when you select two layers and you go into edit and you auto blend, so it auto blends the colors. By the way, when you do this, you want to make sure it has seamless tones and colors checked and panorama. So basically, it has a certain percentage of the color and the overlap. And I'm trying to show this with my hands, but you can't see because I don't have a face cam yet. And um, so it has like an overlap, but if it's if it's like, say, the whole rabbit head is just overlapping the other color, it just gets rid of the rabbit head, and there's nothing. It literally just erases all of it. That's why you have to do that kind of contract, so that way there's a little bit of overlap, and it kind of senses that there's a little bit of overlap of the edge of the rabbit head and the edge of the body of that, and there's something, there's blank space behind it, basically, so it will kind of, yeah. So as you can see, it is questionable. You see, it didn't exactly work out as good as it could have. One thing that Photoshop does that I hate with a burning passion is whenever you do that, notice the edges of the thing. They get so pixelated, they literally just like jump to like square pixels. And it's terrible. It makes everything look like crap, and you have to go through and manually erase every single little edge. And it's really bad. It just it sucks, and I, I hate it. But as you can see, that didn't blend as nicely as it could have kind of took away some things. I mean, I might just want to deal with it. Um, Cause it's kind of like, hang on. So another thing that you can do is after that, you can go to adjustments and there are a whole bunch of settings you can mess with like the curves of the color and you can't actually can't see all of that. But, um, oh, that actually kind of helped. But um, the curves and you can move this and that actually, I think looks a lot better with that. Maybe if we see that a little bit lighter. You mess with the curves of the color, and I think that that actually ended up really good. And now I think that that works really well. There's also this tool which I really enjoy, the spot healing brush tool, which you can select areas like that, and you can kind of blend them together so that they see they're seamless. We actually don't want to do that there because considering it's the bottom of the face, it's not going to be a seamless blend with the back of the leg. So maybe we'll want to do it a little bit around here where the head might connect to the body. And that way it kind of just blends it a little bit more so it doesn't look like it's like just a line. Okay, so now one thing that we want to do is... Oh crap, we messed up a little bit. I mean, not really. We want to zoom in a bunch and then... Let's just let's mess around. Um, so we're, I'm gonna go around and erase all the little blocky edges just a little bit, so it's just a little bit more smooth. Um, I also want to see if I can like maybe blend this a little bit so it's not as blocky, you know? Because this, I forgot to erase this edge a little bit before we did that. And hang on, can we actually make this look a little bit better? Like it's not like missing a part of the rabbit's face. Uh, no, not really. It didn't really work. Uh, okay, so. Um, I'm going to start erasing just a little bit of the edge of it. Okay, that, that's, no, we need a smaller brush size, so it's, yeah. We can change this to like two pixels. That way we can just kind of get in there and erase a little bit of it so it's just a bit more smooth. Because, yeah. I don't erase too much though because we want to still have as much of the actual animal as possible, so, you know, to avoid it really looking weird. Okay, it seems that we are done with that. So now we have our um, our creation of um, the echidna, the echidna, and the rabbit. Wait, is it an egg? What is it? A mammal? It is. What are you talking about? All right. Uh, the echidna is known as spiny ant eaters. That's what I was going to say. Is little ant eaters now belong to the family. I'm not even going to pronounce that. Not even going to try. To the monotrim order of leg egg ma egg <laughs> yeah guys leg egg mammals yeah that <sighs> all right 
interesting. They look cool. I want as a pet. This is Googling with Owen. Is it legal to have an echidna as a pet? Yahoo answers. I have so many answers in my house, no matter how tidy I keep the business of so legally owned an echidna to solve my ant problem. <laughs> Get some bug spray. Get like, what are you talking about? Tidy? It's not. <sighs> Jesus Christ. You gotta get some insulation around like doors and windows. You don't get an echidna. Dear Lord. Apart from the fact that it's illegal to keep an echidna as a pet, it would also be extremely cruel to bring one in from the bush. You would still be left with an ant problem. Echidnas live on sucium termites and roam the bush to break. Clay mounds of these ants, worms, grubs are also part of the diet, but only termites are not available. I apologize to anyone out there for uh, who got their hopes up, but nope. Sadly not. Alright, well. Uh, now is the name. I'm, not, I'm gonna say I've done better things than this. The blending is a little bit questionable on that line under the jaw, like the rabbit. It's kind of weird. But so now we're going to save as. We are, I have animal mixes a folder of them. Now the question is. What are we going to name it? I always combine names of the things. So there's the Echidna and a rabbit. So we can call it the Echidit or the Rabidna. I'm thinking the Rabidna. Let's see. The Rabidna. Yeah. I like the Rabidna. So I can change this. You guys just, you know, in the comments, put what you might want to be the mix of the two names. I'm thinking Rabidna. I like that. It sounds like. Sounds like almost a human name. Some really screwed up parents would name their kid Rabidna. I can see it now. Oh jeez. Okay. Well, and with that, we have our saved Rabidna. So, yeah. Now, I will be putting on the screen currently as I'm talking my... I'm going to do my favorites of the previous things I've been. Some of the best things I've done, or at least the, the concept was good, but maybe the actual combination was lacking, but... It's still still good, still good. It was um these have been fun, I can tell you that much. So, um uh let's see. Anything to say while these are rolling? I don't know. I might just cut to some elevator music or something that I have saved up in my audio folder for editing. But um anyway, thank you for watching. Uh I hope you enjoyed. Comment if you want more or like you could even actually it would really be nice if you commented two animals I could combine. Or three. I've done I'll put up at some point, the one of the triple, actually I did a couple triple ones, but um, yeah, three animals. Any combination of animals, you could even really challenge me and go like up there in the numbers, like a five or something. Like That would be, that would be a challenge. And it would be fun though, I think it'd make for an entertaining video. Anyway, um, comment for more of this, or like, or anything. Subscribe for more as well. I haven't done anything like this before, and I'm hoping it's received well. But um, you know, it's nice to vary up a little bit. So I'm prolonging this. Thanks for watching. Yeah, all that jazz. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will catch you in the next video.